I'll just make sure people know I own the rights to it. This guy on the- <laughs> I don't own the rights to this music in the background. This guy owned the rights to it. Yeah, <laughs> All right, without further ado, let me let me jump ahead so they don't they don't they don't silence the video saying you don't own the right. No, that's all good. Today I got uh, uh first off, I'm Troy Rollins. Welcome, welcome to another exciting episode of Meet the Today I got the hip hop artist. Um I, I I take it his first the first single I remember, damn near went platinum. So mm-hmm. I take it, you know, platinum selling hip hop artist, entrepreneur, attorney, professor. Wow. Father, husband, yes. uh, producer, Negro. <laughs> the one and only, Tracy Lee. Make some yes, noise for Tracy Lee, y'all. Oh, man. Thank, thanks for having me, man. You're too kind. You're too kind, man. Too I, kind. I didn't say anything. I, I said nothing that wasn't true. So mm-hmm. I didn't even get into giving you your, uh, giving you the, I do believe in giving people their their roses while they're still alive. I'm a hip hop head. We talked about this. No doubt. I'm a fan of lyricist. People can say what they want. I'm Rock him, Nas, Karis One, Big Daddy. And Tracy Lee came out at a time. When when uh, right, let's go right back. So so for yeah. people to know uh, I wanna I wanna start back. Um where are you originally from? Um I was born in Buffalo, New York, raised in Philadelphia uh pa and you know landed in the dmv area when i graduated from high school uh i went to a boarding school graduated from high which was a a school that was from first to 12th grade and once i graduated from high school i came to dc went to d howard university the finest institution (laughs) learning in the free world and then um you know wind up staying in dc ever since you know what i'm saying you know subtracting the the years that i you know, was signed as a signed artist with Universal. Where I kind of moved around, but primarily, this has been the home base since '88. So, so let's let's go there. Howard University. You're at Howard. Were yes. You already doing hip hop. Uh, did you know what you wanted to go to school for initially when you went to Howard? Um. Yeah, and I, I got two passions, man. I'm a, I'm a lover of sports as well. So, um, but I had uh, you know, in Philly, I was trying to get a deal you know, probably from the time that I was like 14, 15 years old. And right. so, you know, I was shopping for deals back then, but I told myself if I didn't get a deal by the time I graduated from high school, then I, you know, I was going to go to college and I was going to pursue, um, you know, I was trying to get a D, well, yeah, I was attempting to get a D1 scholarship for playing basketball or baseball. I wound up getting D2. So I was just like, you know what, forget it. I'm going to go to school. And then I, I, I was going to pursue sports broadcasting. And so when I went into Howard, I majored in communications. Um, and, you know, I was headed down that direction since I didn't get my deal in high school. I was going to be a sports broadcaster. And then all of a sudden, I ran into a cat by the name of Derek D. Angeletti, who is, and he'll, you'll hear me say his name a couple of times probably in this conversation, um, but he's a part of the Hitman. Um, he made the Benjamins. He made money, power, respect. He made you know, uh, you know, ton, tons of records for Big and Jay and and all these cats. But he went to Howard and he was an MC, you know, and still an MC now. But I saw him rhyming on the yard one day, and 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 immediately I caught the bug. It was him and his other cat named China Black, and it was like I caught the bug again. It was like, you know, Trey, what are you doing? Why are you putting down the mic? Like that doesn't make any sense. And so. From that point on, I think it was my second semester freshman year, I never looked back. I took a, you know, maybe a brief hiatus for a semester, but from the time I was 14 up until that period t- period of time, I, I really knew what I wanted to do and, and where I wanted to be. You know what I'm saying? So I'm writing. I'm, if y'all see me writing, I'm right. I'm always writing notes about people. <laughs> giving jewels. So you're at Howard. You're you you froze, you froze though you froze I didn't mean to cut you oh, off. Oh, I froze on you. Yeah. I still here. <laughs> yeah, I know. I hear you. I you know you just in one position okay. like you like this. <laughs> Skype, <laughs> Skype he does this right. It is straightening it all out. Nah, it's all good. It's all good. Um, so you're at Howard University. 
university, you meet D Dot. Mm -hmm. um, you two connect and you start doing music, or he puts you on with somebody. How does that transition? So did it seem like it moved fast after you met D Dot? Nah, not really. Um, because like I said, this was freshman year, so we talking okay. about 89, right? So but he was in uh or putting himself into a position with this cat uh named Ron Lawrence, and they had a group called Two Kings and the Cipher. And they went on to sign a deal probably, I think it was in 1981 or something like that. But ever since we met, he always knew, you know, like, especially after I, you know, I, I showed him, you know, that I had skills. So we just kept a, a great rapport all during the time he was signed, all during the time that, you know, he started to get into the, the, the production aspect of, of the music. And right. then, you know, he wound up, you know, going and becoming one of the hitmen, which was on the, uh, you know, a uh, bad boy, the Puff umbrella. And Puff was at Howard at the time, which was, uh, he came in in 87 and was there when I was there. Um, um, and this other cat named Mark Pitts, who was Mark also, up, yes, he's the manager, he managed big. And right. now okay. Mark is like the president of, of RCA, uh, the black music uh, department or what have you, um, you know, doing major things. But Mark didn't know didn't know that I did music while I was at Howard because he had went to Howard as well. Puff didn't know I did music. Only one that knew was 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 Dot. And so you know, after Bad Boy, you know, was doing what they were doing and achieving all the success, uh, Mark had parlayed his position from working you know under Puff and managing big to getting a deal with Universal Records under his company called By Storm. And so D Dot is the one that told Mark, "Yo, did you know that you know Trey? You know Trey, blah blah blah." And he's like, "Yeah, I know Trey." He's like, "Did you know he did music?" And you know, of course, Mark didn't. And so Dot was the one who was like, "Yo, you got it. You know what I mean? You got you got to pull him in. You got to pull him in. You you need somebody to catapult your label as far as from a hip hop perspective because he had already signed you know a singing group and a, and a female artist uh, by the name of Christina." uh the, the 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 singing group was called born in august these brothers i think they were from baltimore if i'm not mistaken um, and this was and this was marks and this was mark's label this, this was mark's label. this, this was wasn't mark. bad boy this was mark's label no nah, this was mark's label yes this was in 1996 so dot was like okay. um yeah you need to sign you need you know at least listen to the demos he's crazy so you know he would listen to the demos and as a matter of fact when he was listening to the demos um and we go. This this is how you know this is back in the day because I'm talking demo talk. We talking cassettes. You know what I'm saying? Cassette tape. People exactly. don't even understand. It's like why I keep saying demo? We yeah. just send it to the bag on Spotify, and if the people like it, I get twenty five cent, right? Yeah, yeah. Nah, that's a different time, different world, people. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So, you had to do two shows before you got twenty five cent back in the day. Facts. <laughs> Your facts. album was already platinum by the time you got twenty five cent. <laughs> facts. Facts. But um, he was sitting in the car with with Big. And Lil C's listening to my demos. And I and and Dot is definitely responsible, but I think in a certain way, Big was responsible for me getting my deal because he would play these these demos for, for Big. And Big, you know, ultimately gave me the cosign. He was, you know, he was telling Mark, yo, your man's nice, your man's nice. So I think that is what prompted Mark to find, you know, to sign me. I signed my deal in spring of '96, by April of '96. And then you know it was it was it was on from there. So April ninety six. Mm -hmm. For y'all that don't know hip hop, ninety six ninety wow well, ninety four to ninety six was a very I mean hip hop altogether. Go back to and 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 for those that don't know, I usually don't date the shows, but we are in the summer of twenty twenty. You got COVID nineteen, coronavirus, all this stuff is going on. Uh, uprising. But we also just had another birthday, 47th birthday, what what people, many people recognize as the birth of hip hop when Cool Herc did the party in 1973. No doubt. And uh and was was doing break beats and the whole nine in the Bronx. Right. But think about the fact that in 96, Biggie is sitting there listening to your joint. I think by what you said by this uh what 96, April 96, you come on by December 96. Biggie's on your album. Correct. That's crazy. That was that was the last time. Wasn't that like the last time Biggie recorded? 
It was the last record that Biggie uh, was 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 a feature on outside of the Bad Boy uh, camp. Outside of Life did, After Death. Yeah, because he did. No, no, no. He was done Life After Death. He did one more recording after me, and that was Victory. That's victory. On, right. on Puff's album. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Right, um, right, he right. did that a week before he passed. You know what I mean? But other than that, I was the I was the only other recording. And like I said, that was outside of the bad boy camp. So, all right, you, all right, let's go back. So, did you have was the was the the theme on your first album? Yes. Was that the single initial single? Yeah. Well, it it, it wow. Okay, so yeah, you about to get some nuggets here. So so what was supposed to be? We had worked three records. A pin. <laughs> We had worked two records before we actually got to the theme. The first record was a record that I did with Faith Evans called Showtime. And so, you know, we serviced that to a couple of DJs, blah, 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 and, you know, it wasn't sticking. So then I did another record called I Like It Like That, where I sampled the D'Angelo sample to a lady. And so that, you know, Kid Capri loved that record. It was a whole, a few other D loved that record, but we couldn't do that record because we couldn't clear the sample and ironically the per one of the people that actually had a piece of the publishing for that particular record was the vice president of music at universal at the time so i never really understood that like how do you not clear that sample and you own a piece like it must be something else see this is before i really understood the business right business so then we get to the theme and so the theme it's party time, you know, let that, let that, you know, let the DJs taste that a little bit. And they was like, uh, and that was about to fall by the wayside until a DJ by the name of Cool DJ Red Alert gave it the Cool post. DJ Red Alert. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Once he gave it the cosign, it said, oh, this is, this is, everybody else fell in line. Oh, this is bananas. Everybody else fell in line after that. And so that's when, you know, you started hearing the theme on mix shows at the end of 96, starting about like the end of October. It's on Battle of the Beats on Hot 97. Then it starts to, you know, bubble in Philly because that's where I'm from, you know, Power 99 and all that. And so, you know, from the up and down the East Coast, like not all the way down the East Coast yet, but from like D.C. to New York, that thing is bubbling until we get to the top of the year when we finally put it out officially as a single. And then it just spread like wildfire from there. So, all right. So this is 96. Yeah. You coming up on now. Are you still at, are you still in Howard? No, no, no. I graduated from Howard in 92, but okay, I stayed so you, down there for a minute until we got the deal. All right. So we're going to jump, we're going to jump around a little bit. So you graduated in 92, mm -hmm. you're doing your thing. You, you, you're getting to know as much as you can about the industry. Right. Um, and theme hits, it mm -hmm. becomes the, because I know by, by, because it's October, so by homecoming, yeah. October 96, yeah. yeah, there is no hotter song. Nah, nah. The following, the, okay, so yeah, no, well, October 96 at Howard, it was just starting to, and people and people that Howard had are, are now seeing because, like I said, I had been down there the whole time. And and matter of fact, um, my partners, you know, not only my brothers but my business partners at the time, and they still my brothers to this day. But we had an organization called Power Move, and so we were doing parties and bringing other acts down. You know, this was a part of the process of me eventually getting signed because we had started a movement down in the DC area, specifically in the Howard University community, um, right. you know, for, for those years that I, you know, had been in school and out of school, uh, we would bring like acts down because we were trying to create a situation to get noticed, you know, ourselves and, and, right. and get time because I, I had deals before the universal uh, situation came, came into play. Like I got approached about, the possible deals. Like I got approached by Eric Sermon uh, in 94, 95. I was actually um, in line or in amongst the, the, the final people to kind of 
uh, uh, solidify the the Def Squad. You know what That's I'm saying? Right. It was either out of me or Keith Murray, and of course they, they went with Keith Murray. But they had approached me about you know and approached my management at the time you know about a sit down and that's, and that's kind of funny because that, you know I mean? at least they knew they wanted a lyricist that had a yeah. certain flow because if you listen you know it's it's funny you mentioned that yeah and even before that i had i got approached by a cat uh by the name uh from from rowdy records um uh what's the brother's name claude austin god rest his soul um mm -hmm. with dallas austin's brother and so they had a group called the King and I on this particular label at that time. This was like 94. Um, and so there were talks about me, you know, signing with them. And eventually I fell by the wayside. And in fact, when I before I signed my deal with Universal with Mark Pitts, I had actually signed a deal uh, uh, with the brother with the brother from from Shy. Um, uh, oh, light skin brother order. <laughs> no, no, no. It wasn't it wasn't Garfield. It was Carl right, right. Martin. Carl Martin, right? Carl Martin had it because he was the one that was behind the pen of "If I Ever Fall in Love" and a few of other, you know, their their hits. So, right. uh, MCA had uh, given him a deal, and so I was the first cat that he signed up under that deal. And so, um, but but it just didn't fit, you know, because you know he kind of relied on me to you know really spearheaded you know, on my own, which was a great opportunity, but I wasn't ready for that. You know what I'm saying? But nevertheless, I was still signed to him when Mark approached me. And so him and Mark had to work something out where I could get out of that deal and transition over into the buy smoke deal. Let's, let's, I'm glad you said something. I want to, I want to hit on that. I want to stay there for a minute. Mm -hmm. You knew you wanted to be an artist. You knew you wanted to do music, mm -hmm. but you felt like you would feel more comfortable in a unit than as a solo artist. Um, no, no, no. When, when I say, when I say I, I'm, I'm all, I was more spearhead. What did you mean? Say this again. When he said he wanted you to spearhead, meaning you mean as an artist or just business wise? No, nah, meaning, meaning me coming up with all of the concepts, me coming up with, uh, you know, um, 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 all the production. Well, he had some production in line, but it was more or less me just bringing almost everything to the table you know what i'm saying and that was something that i probably wasn't ready for at that time like i could fight i knew what not too many people were doing that especially in hip-hop not too many nah, people were doing exactly that. exactly but 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 not i didn't understand that i was actually well maybe i wasn't ready for it when i signed with call but i was definitely ready for it when i signed with mark which was like a year or two later because you know, one of the things that we were able to do, which is uncommon for a new artist, is that half of the album, if not more, me and my camp produced it. You know what I'm saying? Me and my camp led the direction for, you know, uh, um, you know, the concept of many faces. You know what I mean? That wasn't them. But what DDOT did is he crafted a certain sound and a certain way that we should or gave us the skeleton of the direction that we should go in meaning okay look we need to lead off with this with with this record right here because this is what's gonna you know garner the attention and then you know there was some ideas that he had and we had collectively that the 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 label kind of shot down and i think and we'll probably get into that uh, discussion but i think that led to the downward trajectory if you will as opposed to ascending to where dot thought we should go and he was absolutely right. right you know what i mean but they allowed us the freedom to create the records they allowed us the freedom to come up with the concepts they allowed us to free you know it was just that he provided that insight okay you know with regards to the sequencing of the album with regards to like i said which record should lead all that kind of stuff that that was him and that was his guidance you know what i'm saying so all right so you you're in the midst of it let's go let's go back a little bit you got that the the single release is this are we still in 96 where it really gets to the point where because it went into billboard and and did and did numbers yeah yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm saying? yeah. so we're, we're about in 97 like like i said we officially it, it started bubbling in 96 but that was strictly street street, street stuff right yep but once we officially went for commercial release in 97 
top of 97 it was right after the holidays then that's when everything was like phew, you know what i mean and it happened just like this because remember i had just signed my deal in april of 96 right so now we already less than a year I didn't did like you said. I did records with Big, did records with Buster. I got an album that's about to drop at the top of '97. So things just and nobody knew who I, I came out of nowhere. Nobody knew who I was, and that was a part of the reason why I think they were shooting those records down that we presented before because I, you know, right. like who's this? Who right. like what circle is he involved and in? No right? real and no real cosign. It's not like you said. Right. If you come from Death Squad, Eric right. Sermon, EPMD, Redman, right. they're cosigning you. Right. And no real no real cosign. Exactly. And you're going straight off. Is this going to be a hit right out the door? Exactly. You know, and we saw other people do that, but they were still under the umbrella, especially when Bad Boy when happened when, with yeah. Nine, with my homie and all of, you know, he has people to come under the umbrella and then they hit. Yeah. Then, you know, but you had to go off of the music the skill. Yeah, the record, the record, the record. I tell people all the time. The record spoke for itself. Like people know that record to this day and don't know me. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that was the thing that I really, um, I really saw. All right. Because, like I said, we can be on here for two hours. I got enough. <laughs> so, '97 hit. How? When do you realize you already know you're in your own bubble? A uh, thing about a, a rapper, artist, you gotta be like sprinters. You know, you always like I'm the hottest thing going. Cause that's mm -hmm. how I gotta go. If it's a battle, if it's anything happening, but when you realize my life is about to change, like was it ever a point where you went to that level, or was it like, okay, let's get this business straight? Cause I'm still wondering how y'all gonna work the business thing. Was it a confusion about the business, or did you get a chance to it? Did you get a chance to enjoy any of it? Cause like I said, it was a fast paced moving thing between '96 transition into '98, where everybody is. Hype Williams out, right? <laughs> you know, what I'm right, right. You know, what I'm saying? so it's it's a it's a like a fast pace. Ninety six, you getting these out. You got your single hitting the streets in ninety six. The same time as Reasonable Doubt mm -hmm. is hitting the streets. So we listening for lyricists. We mm -hmm. we we, we on Nas's thing, but also mm -hmm. he's about to transition to do some glittery stuff. You know, yeah. <laughs> yep. It's like ninety eight. So you're in that in that hub. When did yeah. you realize? Did you feel the change? Did your life change at all? Um, I felt the change, but I felt like, so, so this, this is the, the, the good and the bad. I didn't, I really wasn't paying attention to the business, which is the bad, you know what I'm saying? But the good was, I felt like we're about to come in here and we're about to take it over. And I don't really, and like, I didn't really, I didn't really care. Like I didn't like, okay. So I live my life, right? I've, I've, I've moved around a lot. So, and I tell, I tell this story all the time. I moved around a lot. So I was always like the new kid in the class, you know what I'm saying? And being a new kid in the class, there are circles that are already defined within these sectors of wherever you're going. There are already friendships established, da, 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 da. So you're either going to do one of two things. You're either going to try to fit in to what's already established, or you're going to go into this establishment and kind of carve out your own niche take your right. ball and go to the other court if you will you know what i'm saying right. and then one or two things are going to happen either they're going to look at you especially if you're nice no yeah not especially you have to be nice in order for people to look at you and right. they're going to say yo that kid over there is kind of nice and either come over there to you or they'll say hey that kid is nice yo why don't you come over here and play with us you know what i'm saying so that was my attitude in this business. Like when I when I got in there, it was really about the music. I finally got, I'm finally in a position where I'm gonna be heard by the masses. This is what I've been looking for and waiting for for now 15 years. You know what I'm saying? So now we finally here. You know what I mean? And it's like, I right, I'm about I'm about to me and my crew are about to come in here and do our own thing. So Yes, when I first heard my record on Hot 97 and it was in Battle of the Beats and it won like three, four nights in a row against, you know, the 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 the, the, the mob deeps of the world and the red mans of the world and all the other stuff, I'm like, oh yeah, we here. Now it's time to for y'all to take notice and serve notice that we're here and we don't care who you are. You know what I'm saying? And that was really the attitude. So but 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 the downside going back to the business part of it. 
never, my blinders were on and never really paid attention to the business like that. All right. So I, I was checking out a joint where you talked a little bit about when you and Biggie were in the studio recording. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned, Biggie mentioned some things to you about the business. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and like I said, I, I don't, I don't believe in coincidence. I don't believe it's coincidence that y'all working on a project. I don't believe it's coincidence that you had that chance to have that kind of conversation with him mm -hmm. before he would pass. Mm -hmm. And he tells you these things about the business. He's dropping jewels on you like, oh, okay. And then you go and see for yourself. Yep. Where in your mind did it get to the point where you were like, you know what? I want to learn this business thing to the next level. I want to I want to go into the legal side. What what was the incident or where did it come how cuz sometimes when you watch, you know, we watch unsung and mm -hmm. see these artists they still they still dancing yeah. in their yeah. 70s. Ooh, yeah. They still touring. I was like that's all the money they got. They got to go out and make that five grand cuz they, right. they 15 grandkids that's right, and a that's three year old. Right. He's 70 that's with right. a three year old. You know, right. <laughs> you know, right. still talk. Um, so when did you realize, okay, this business thing ain't right? Um, well, I didn't have aspirations to go to the legal side until well after the point that I realized that I need to dig into this business. I felt like I needed to dig into the business you know, while I was still signed, after that conversation, interesting enough, after that conversation with Big, that's when the light switch came on, right? So now I see I see light, but I'm not going to the light yet, but I see the light, right? So then as we start to, you know, continue to do our promo runs and all that other stuff, you know, we well in the 97 and we start popping up in cities. And, you know, first thing was, after we did the record with Big, come to find out we can't advertise, market, and promote that Big is actually on the record. Like, if you look on many faces, you won't see featuring Notorious B.I.G. If you look at, you know, when the, when the record was in record stores, you know what I'm saying, when they had brick and mortars and tower and all that, you won't see a sticker that says, you know, many faces, which includes the hit, yeah. keep your hands high, featuring Notorious, you won't see none of that. You know what I'm saying? Only way that you know the big is on that record is if you actually put the needle, you know, I'm, I'm going old school again. If you put the needle on the vinyl and you hear his voice. So that was that was and the he, And he says stuff in the rhyme that people have sampled from that song. Listen, so, 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 again, the only way that you know that big is on, this is that, going back to 97, there was right. no advertisement, marketing, and promotion allowed for the people, the public, to know that Big was on a record. The only permission that we got is the permission for him to record and the permission for us to actually put the record out with him on it, right? So that's that That was the one trigger. Second trigger was when I was going out on these promo runs and I go into major cities and I see, you know, you know, in certain cities, nobody's there. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, yo. Uh, uh, who is in charge of the market, the, the promotions team in Boston, or who's in charge of the promotion team? Like, there was one time we was in Oakland, San Francisco, and you're signed to Universal. Are you signed to Bat? Who are you signed to at this I'm time? Signed to I'm signed to Boston Universal at the time, but Universal, okay. it, you know, they have promotion. Are you directly to signed to Universal, or are you signed to a production I'm company? Under well, Boston Universal, I don't know how their deal was structured, but we had access to the system, to the universal oh. system. So in every major city, you know what I'm saying, there was a universal promotions team there ready right. for us to come so we can do our runs around the city, taking us to various record stores, taking us to all the hot spots in the cities, blah, blah, blah. I remember I went to San Francisco, and this dude takes us to, like, one record store, and then all of a sudden he got us hiking in the mountains. And I'm like, yo, in the hills of San Francisco, like, what, the, what are we doing out here? Like, what, you, what? Like, I'm looking at me and my partners. I'm like, yo, what? I'm asking, dude, like, why are we up here? What are you doing? You know what I'm saying? And so that's that's when some other triggers started to come. And then so I remember distinctly, 
I was on, uh, I forget what city we were in, but again, we had a record store. Nobody's there. Signage is not up in the front. The record, the, the, the records are somewhere tucked away in the back of the, you know what I'm saying? In the back of the store. And we like, yo, this makes no, so I'm on the, I'm, we get back on the bus or whatever we was on, whatever we was riding in. And so I call up, you know, Mark and Wayne and all these cats. And, you know, we going back and forth, back and forth, me, my management, da, 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 da. And we forgot to, <laughs> and after the conversation was over, we forgot to hang up or something or press mute or whatever. But, you know, we was letting them have it after that. You know what I'm saying? But they heard the whole thing. And they was like, you know what? We're going to, we, we pulling y'all off the road and y'all can come back. Da, 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 da. You know what I'm saying? And, then, and so these instances are the ones that really, you know, triggered that, hey, man, this, this business is not right. This business, like, if you don't, and we were, and, 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 I would say, and I'm going to take onus to this, like if you don't have a team ready to go, once you put that name on the dotted line, and when I say a team, I mean a tight management team, your right. legal team, you know what I'm saying? You know, those two in, in particular, you know what I mean? And even the cast that you got on the road with you, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, somebody that is your DJ, sometimes you got to wear a double hat. So your DJ man had to be your money collector. You know what I mean? When you stopping, the, you know, you're getting that second half. You already got the first half. But when you're getting that second half before you step on stage, you got to have somebody designated to get that bread, count that money before you step foot on that stage because that was a part of the contract. You know what I'm saying? Right. But if your right. team is not right, before you sign that deal, it's going to be a hell of a learning experience once you do sign that deal and you start start moving because stuff moves fast. And so I, I'll take total blame for that, total blame for that. But at the time, I just felt like, you know, and I think a, a part of that is that, you know, we went into this situation with people that we knew, you know, and we thought were, well, they had the ability to separate friendship from business and we didn't. Right. You see what I'm saying? So that that was a hell of a learning experience. But like I said, I didn't get the legal at the, the legal desire until after I got dropped and I, I had to do some soul searching. But we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get that. We'll get that. And, and, and I want to I want to say this. And this is for anybody, because there's a lot of artists listening. There's new artists that's, that just, you know, I have artists now. I know people that are putting their stuff on on Spotify and doing their thing. And I interviewed uh, I interviewed my man, uh, Will Downing. Mm. And oh. You know, artists like that. And, you know, you hear about, you know, what they the different things they did and how they structure certain things and then becoming independent, what that meant. Um, and and we see certain things. We see it all the time. Like I said, if you just watch Unsung, you see it all Absolutely. the time. Same story. But there's the same story all the time. And But there's no other way to know. It's kind of sad. No offense to the pioneers, but it's kind of sad that some of the key pioneers no offense to I'm gonna say I'm gonna say this name because the longevity of them is crazy. I'll say the reason that LL or even Run from Run DMC come out and do a conference because remember initially Run DMC didn't sign wasn't signed with Def they weren't they didn't sign yeah, the was on profile yeah it was on profile right you know so so and with LL he had to restructure certain things Stevie Wonder. Stevie yeah. Wonder said, he, "Remember, he went to he went to Barry Gordon. He was like, you know, I think I'm worth a million dollars." And, yeah. he, and, and Barry's like, "We have oh, we yet, Troy. We yet. I lost you, brother. It's just a pause. Yeah. To, <laughs> somebody calling you, like, oh yeah, 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 and." So he's going through doing the thing. And he said, Barry Gordy was like, we've never paid anybody that much. And I don't know, Stevie, what to tell you. And Stevie left Motown. Mm -hmm. And then they were like, oh, snap. He was serious. You know, him and Ray Charles, if, if people don't realize this, one thing about Stevie and Ray Charles, Sam Cooke was another Sam Cooke owned his own label. Absolutely. Um, SAR Records. But um, Ray Charles and Stevie were about their business. Yep. Stevie said, I know my worth. I want this. Yep. Plus, yep. they talk 
people like, you know, he's talking to the, the counterparts, the Caucasian, Frank Sinatra, all these people like that. Mm -hmm. So, but nobody in the hip hop realm was doing this thing. This, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, you got Jack the Rapper, but, and people were having conferences and stuff and telling new artists how they should structure this, that, and other. But without a college degree or going through it, you know, if you're young, like you, all of a sudden you got more everything you want, but financial security and the right things. You know, it, it now it's different. Now, someone like you, who's an artist who's had that kind of success, had that experience, talk to some people who some people think are some of the greatest artists of all time, mm -hmm. one of the greatest hip hop artists of all time, having those conversations, having your degree, mm -hmm. having everything. Now you're in a position where you can tell people, look, now that this new medium is here, but these are still, because they still, here's what, about, what I think is about to happen with the record industry. If the record industry doesn't start giving cash up front deals again, it's going to be gone. Oh, absolutely. Without question. So all of a sudden, it's going to be you? What are you here for? What are you here for? Why, why, right. why we need you? Because because if you're telling me I'm going to get a quarter, I'm going to get this, that, and other, that's how much they pay me online. That's right. And I have a million followers. That's so right. why do I need you? Why do I you need know, you? So, so all of a sudden, okay, let's fast forward a little bit. Mm -hmm. You go through the industry. It's a crazy time in hip hop. Anybody knows that time in hip hop from 97 to, like I said, just that year, 97, 98. 98, everything changed. Yep. Hip hop R&B merged like never before. Yep. And you can't tell hip hop from R&B. Right, right. <laughs> so, facts. facts. And the lyricists are sitting back like this, mm -hmm. scratching their head while, you know, people making millions for two verses. See, Raw Raucous was the reaction to that. That that oh. Raucous was the reaction to what you're talking about. That was okay. the reason why that happened. Because lyricists were sitting back like this. So they started lyricist lounge and all that other stuff. And here comes your most deaths and Talib Kweli's and all that other stuff. So it's interesting that you said that. That's exactly what happened. Right. So at this time, what was it, about 90? So the album comes out in 97. Mm -hmm. Now, how long did you carry? How long did they carry you on your deal before you before they decided to let you go? Um, well, I stayed. OK, so 97, all 97, we were working we were out on the road, summer shows, all that kind of stuff. Released another single after the theme called Give It Up, Baby. Shot the video in L.A. Had my man Marlon Wayans in there and, you know, right. some other people. And, you know, we, we were really we had some momentum. But then that second single, Give It Up, Baby, I think was not the complimentary follow-up to the theme because there were certain people in the building that were trying to capture a certain type of vibe and that's the, when i alluded to it earlier with regards to dot dot and myself but you know we saw something else we, we was like nah we gotta we gotta ride this wave because people still don't know who tracy lee is remember i signed my deal april 96 and we now, very next year, things just took off and they still don't know who I am. So we got to kind of ride this, this 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 wave, this vibe that we on. But what you're going to do is by releasing this next single, you're going to take that trajectory. It's going to go down because what you're trying to do is you shoot for radio. And see, going up under Universal, you know, it's a young company in terms of pushing hip hop and hip hop music. So they don't really have a formula. It's really just throw it up a wall and see if it sticks. And what can we and, get on our return? Pulling money, and at that time, they're pulling money out of Universal was already pulling money out of R and B budgets for right. promotion. Now right. they're pulling. You know, it's no more Michael Jackson. That's why Michael Jackson got in there. Tommy Mottola is the devil. He's yeah. the devil. Yeah, <laughs> because yeah. they're not giving me money because he's used to getting a hundred million dollars. Oh, it's, go record your album, Michael. Right. And they're right. pulling back money. So what you like going on tours and you're like, where's everybody at? Oh, this the guy? Okay. And you got a universal back. You like, what? Y'all didn't yeah. promote this? Oh, we exactly. just heard about it yesterday. Exactly. <laughs> right? Exactly. So of course no one's gonna know you because they're they're doing their tent poles. They're trying to put money under the flagships, I guess. And yeah, and, yep, nah, nah. and, and okay, and, and speaking to that, so 97 goes by, now we're in the 98. Um, by storm actually leaves. But Universal decides to keep me. So Boss Storm went on to LaFace. And so they did a deal with, uh, Mark did a deal with L.A. Reid. And, and, and it was told to me that Universal decided to keep me because 
you know, just to try to get some of the money back that they had already pumped into, you know, by storm. They got to, you know, because I, I, I might have been the most successful artist to come off of by storm label. Like I told you, they signed two or three other acts that weren't as successful as, as I was. So Universal, this is what was told to me now. Whether I believe it now or not, after some deep thinking, don't know. But nevertheless, I'm on Universal, but I'm in that building by myself, basically. There is no support system there. You know what I'm saying? DDOT is still there, you know, like talking for me and getting the budget and all that other stuff. But really, it's me and him. And it's frowned upon, you know, from a label to see an artist coming in there at that time, you know, and even probably now coming in there, unless you're like a Drake or something, coming in there and, you know, wanting to sit in on the meetings. Like, okay, what's the marketing strategy for this? You know what I'm saying? How are we pushing this to radio? Now, see, now we're getting closer to this business acumen that we're talking about. Now I'm in there. Like I need, you know, but at that time, because we didn't have that voice other than mine and Derek's and Dot's, then it's frowned upon. So they started concentrating on other acts starting to come in. So here comes Nelly and the St. Lunatics. Here comes Cash Money. Now this is the beginning wow. of, yeah. So you see yeah. where the attention shifted. And so I kind of- Nine, eight, nine, this. nine. Exactly. <laughs> nine, eight to the nine, they skipping you. Nine, eight nine, to the nine. Nine, nine, eight, eight, nine, eight, 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 eight. <laughs> You know what I mean? So, you know, so now they still gave me a budget to record. We recorded another album called Live from the 215. Um, I had a young Kanye doing a couple of songs on this album. I had, you know, the likes of Corrupt, uh, Black Bob, Buckshot, um, you know, on, on records. I had, you know, um, um, you know, of course, Dot was, you know, executive producing it along with myself. Uh, but then, you know, we, we were going on promo tours and all that kind of stuff. We had released a single. We had released two singles, shot a video down in Atlanta. Brian Barber, who was the director for Outkast and all of their stuff and did Idlewild right. and all that, he shot uh, the, the, uh, the, the feature video off of this particular album that was supposed to come out. It was a joint called We Like. I had a young Ludacris in the video before anybody had heard of him. I had Lil John in the video before anybody had heard of him. And then we went to Miami. This is about 2000, going into 2001, went to Miami for a show. Um, and there was a certain omen, certain omen in the air because it was it rained the whole time we were down there. The show got canceled, you know, but Universal still paid for the trip. Blah, 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 paid for the, you know what I mean, hotel. Then when we got back to JFK, you know, I got a phone call and it was from Monty Lippman. And he said, yeah, or secretary or whatever. It was like, yeah, you know, we just um, sad to inform you that your services are no longer needed. You know what I mean? Um, come, come to the office for your parting gift, if you will. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. So now I'm like, damn. Hit me like a ton of ton of bricks. It was like, damn, it's over. Is it over? I kept, I, I kept saying definitively it's over, but then I would be like, is it over? I got to figure something out. So I went back home. Uh, to my mom's crib, stayed there for like three years. I mean, three years, three months. Sorry, never would have been three years. <laughs> what what for, year was this? This was 2001. 2001, okay. Yeah, we at the top of 2001. Stayed there for like three months, and then she was like, Uh, you gotta go. <laughs> um, I don't care where you go, but you gotta get out of here, right? You know, so I moved down to Atlanta. Um, you know, me and my brother got an apartment and then he went off to grad school. I met a young lady down there. And so we started living together. Um, I released a, a, a single down there, which was funded by Marlon Wayans um, at the time called Ready, Willing and Able. And on the flip side of that, it was a joint called uh, Get On It. And I was doing some work with Nike for this one on one basketball tournament called Nike Battleground. So I was hosting that with John Sally at the time. Mm -hmm. So all of the, but, but, but during this transitional period, it was still, you know, and I, and I was able to save, you know, some money, but by this time you're talking about from 97 to 2001, now things are starting to dwindle a little bit. So I finally get down to my last $7, right? 
And so I'm thinking to myself, what am I going to do with seven dollars? So then I can go get a meal, blah, 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 and that'll be that. But I'm a, you know, you hear it in the music. I'm a spiritual cat. So right. you know, I'm praying. I'm asking God, like, listen, I'm all ears. I just release it all to you. Whatever it is I'm supposed to do, please just just, you know, I'm I'm open, I'm receptive to whatever it is. So I went to church, just dropped the money in the pan. Like, here, here's my offering. Just do what you will. So then I get a call from Wayne Barrow. Wayne, this is a week later. I get a call from Wayne Barrow, which is the president of Boston, which is actually Mark Pitts' cousin. And he calls me and he says, yo, um, Universal called me and they said they got a publishing check for you. You know what I'm saying? But they don't have an address to send it. And I don't know how much it is, but here's the number to call them, blah, blah, blah. You know, give them your information and they'll send you the check. So I did that. So a week after that phone call, I get a check in the mail for $7,000. So then, but there's more. I get another check. Not a week gimmick after when you're that. Tithing. It's not a gimmick when you're tithing. You might tie. Oh, no, 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 no. no. We have listen, a tenth. Listen, <laughs> listen. I, listen. Can't nobody tell me about my God, man. I look, I don't even get into them arguments no more. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, right, right. God, no. Like, look, man. Y'all can whatever. I know like, what it is. That's you know like somebody saying? arguing with you about. That's not your mother. It was like <laughs> I've been with her all my life, and I was talking to her on the phone earlier. That's right. What do you mean not my mother? That ain't your mother. It's like she's right here. <laughs> I'm talking about it like she's not here. Exactly. Like, nah, man. I don't believe I mean, in your mother. That's yeah. my mother. That's yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's just senseless. So then right. a week after that, I get another check for fifty seven thousand dollars. So now so wait, 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 wait. We got with time, 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 time. So you had you had your publishing rights. Yes. Or you had a 50, you had your publishing rights. Fifty percent of it. Fifty percent of my writers. Fifty percent of my writers. Right. So, yeah. so how did you? How did you? We got. As I said, we got Tarantino. You know, I, I'm gonna get to that. Yeah, because some artists, they don't even have that. Well, see, back in back then, it was it was customary, at least for a period. You did a 50-50 publishing deal with right. the label, right? But in return for that fifty percent that you gave, they're supposed to give you. A monetary figure for it. I signed, and, and, and we're probably going to lead into this story because I don't know if you saw this story somewhere else where I, I sold 50% of my publishing for a dollar. So in other words, I came into it owning 100% of my publishing, but I, I, I in my contract, is it, 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 you know, it, this was standard. You automatically, and this, came, this, this came with the deal. You sell 50% of your publishing to the label that is signing. So I sold 50% of my publishing to Buy Storm for $10,000. I never saw that $10,000. But my mistake was I also in transition of signing this contract and two mistakes I made. I hired a lawyer that wasn't an entertainment attorney because at that time, it was just like, I'm about to get a deal. We just need to find a lawyer. I took the advice of some cat that I knew. I don't even remember who told me. Yo, my cousin, he's a lawyer. You know what I'm saying? He was a corporate lawyer. You know what I mean? He understood some, you know, uh, uh, fundamentals of a contract, but not an entertainment. Not definitely not a music contract. You know what I'm saying? So, but I did know this part. I signed for 50% of my publishing. I'm going to sell to you for $10,000. The other problem besides getting the lawyer, the lawyer that I had was in transition of moving around. Now that we signed a deal, moving to New York, I misplaced the contract. That lawyer had a copy of the contract, but he's now, after he got his percentage off of what I signed for, you know what I'm saying? He's now long gone. I can't find him nowhere. So I can't find him to get a copy. I misplaced or lost my copy. So now I have to rely on my new attorney to call up or to request from by storm a copy of the deal, which by right they're supposed to give me. However, when we get back a copy of the deal, the deal is altered a bit. So instead of me selling 50% of my publishing for $10,000, the contract reads me selling my publishing for a dollar. So there's there's a bunch of zeros that are missing. 
Totally my fault, though. You understand? Totally my fault. Because I, I never should have misplaced or lost the contract in the first place. Because okay. you leave yourself acceptable and open to what you just heard. All right, y'all got the pen and pad. All right. So you get another one for fifty-seven thousand. Fifty-seven thousand. You get another check for fifty-seven thousand dollars, right? So then now it's time to figure this thing out. You know what I'm saying? Um, what do we do next? I paid off Howard University, so now I'm debt free with regards to my undergraduate bills and all the other stuff from student loans. So they're done. What do I do? I went and actually got a job moving furniture down in Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? Because the money was running out. We do what we got to do. But I'm not going to do that forever. What do we do? Still praying. Still being receptive. Then it dawns on me. Man, you spent the last five, six years, you know, in this business as an artist. You didn't pick up on anything business-wise? Tell you what, why don't you go educate or re-educate yourself and go to law school and become an attorney. I had, I had graduated from school 10 years prior to that. You know what I'm saying? So it was like me going back to school that was unheard of, came out of nowhere, never thought I would have do not have to. It was a choice, but I never thought I would do that. I didn't even have the desire to do that. But it made all the sense in the world. So that's when I started prepping, took the LSAT, you know what I mean? Um, scores were good enough to get me into Southern University Law Center in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I kept it. I kept it HBCU. Um, went in in 2003, graduated 2006, and then passed the bar in 2007. Been a licensed attorney for the last 13 years. <laughs> All right. Like I said, we we probably gonna have to do a part two. Okay. <laughs> probably gonna. Have- Probably gonna have to do a part two, but I wanna I wanna get into this. Okay, so become an attorney, and then you you like you said you have a love for sports, you have a love for entertainment. Of course, you you start working with different artists. Where from some of the artists that you help in the industry or that became clients for you? Um, we're gonna start with uh, first of all, my man Young Guru, who is engineer, DJ, producer extraordinaire. Um, been with Jay-Z for the last 20 some odd years. Uh did some definitely did some 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 contractual work for him. Solange Knowles, Kelly Rowland, uh Eric Robeson, uh, who I think is the illest independent artist in the world and was doing this way before, you know, independent being independent was the thing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um yes. uh, Algebra Blessed, uh yeah. Coach Bryant, you know, there was a company that I worked for, Invisible Inc who had uh, a business dealing with a company that Kobe was affiliated with. And so we did some some, some uh, contractual work for him, God rest his soul. Yeah. Uh, uh, who am I missing? I mean, yeah. that pretty much sums up the big names beside, you know, some other in- independent artists that, you know, and this is where I really, uh, what I really went to school for is like, you know, just giving consultation to a lot of these artists, these up and coming artists that have no clue or have a lot of questions, you know what I'm saying? And so I feel like, you know, the reason I went to back to school and not only for myself, but really it was for people that was coming up in the game that, you know, to give them the type of type of guidance that I didn't get when I was coming up. So, you know, that's where I get the satisfaction from, you know what I mean? And, and so you don't, you, you're doing this and because I heard some place where you said it was a span. How long was a span before you said, okay, I'm going to release my next project? And th- did you do it independent initially? Um, yeah, yeah. Everything else since I've, since I've gotten dropped has been independent. So <laughs> right. everything. Um, so in between the time of Live from the 215, which, by the way, got shoved and was never released. Like I told you, we finished it and never released it. Until now, if you go to my, my subscription page, uh, patreon.com forward slash Tracy Lee Music, that album is sitting there along with the other albums that I've completed. But I have been doing music all during that time, even the time when, like I told you, I released a single that Marlon Wayans had fa- uh, funded, um, and I had completed, like, I got vaults of music that I had done in between that time, the time I got dropped, and the time I went to law school, and even after that. 
But I felt like I needed to do something that I would package and put it out to the people. You know what I'm saying? By 2014, there was an album called ESQ, The Revelation. And yeah. so that really takes you and gives you the story of what transpired from the last time you, if you knew who Tracy Lee was and you were wondering where Tracy Lee went, ESQ gives you the, the complete gambit of, of what it was and tells you the story of what happened. You know what I mean? And now you've released the album, your new album. It You haven't even fully released it yet. No, well, I, I'm only releasing it, releasing it on my platform, which is tracyleemusic.com or patreon.com forward slash Tracy Lee Music, because I feel like we're in a time where it is time, like you were just alluding to earlier. It's like, what do you need a label for? Unless, you know what I'm saying? And the same thing goes to these streaming platforms. Streaming platforms don't pay you jack. It's really just for, 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 for promotion and to get, you know, to cast a wide net on folks that you don't even know if that's your audience or not, but you're, you're kind of fishing to see who bites. Whereas I know, we, I know we're running out of time, but I, I gotta say, so what do you, you we gotta, we gotta talk, we gotta get you to do a forum. We gotta get oh, you to do a forum. We gotta do a I would love to. Because a lot of these young artists and older artists and people, you know, people like Will, I love the fact that Will, Will got 20 something albums out. He said, you get my album, you can buy it here, you can buy it here. Yeah, you may hear some stuff on it, but you're not just going to listen to my whole album on Spotify. Right. And that'd be it. Nah. So and, and I'm glad you mentioned Patreon. And Patreon. His new album is and, called... And my Glory. website, TracyLeeMusic.com. Either Tracy or. TracyLeeMusic.com. New album is called Glory. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Thank I'm, I'm, and that's what I meant to say earlier. I was like, look, I'm feeding on it because I'm a, I'm a slow... People no, 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 no. I want to tell people you're you're digesting that album the way it's supposed to be digested. It's it's so many layers to yeah. that point. Like it's just so many. It's it's Lori made me go back and start listening. I was telling about him, I was telling him earlier. Me and my daughter, I was like, all right, let me put some Tracy Lee on while I'm working. You find something that's not because my daughter's here. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, my daughter's here, but my daughter's not here. I'm in here. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but that's also the beauty of these albums. These, the, the last three albums that I've done, ESQ, ETU, and Glory, is if, if there's any profanity in it, it's really to accentuate like a certain thing that I felt like I had to use that word. And it's really only like two words. It's a lyricist. So yes. it goes like this. It's yes. nothing where, you know, it's not, no offense to my West Coast folks. No, 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 no doubt. No doubt. <laughs> but um, but um, it's like I said, I've been cranking. It's about time. And that's off of the what album is that off? That's, that's off of that's ESQ. ESQ, right? Yeah. So, so amazing, amazing quality stuff. Thank amazing you. Test, no other way to say it. An amazing testimony Thank of you. what saying. Okay, what am I gonna do? You know, let me go this route. Mm -hmm. And Family Man, I was joking him. I was like, his atmosphere looked like he about to shoot <laughs> a hip hop video or. Kill somebody like Dexter. Even one or the other is about to go down <laughs> right where he <laughs> it's about to go down. Like I'm yeah, like, we're in a dungeon, baby. We're in a dungeon. If you had came out with one of those shields they're wearing in the stores to cover your face, I'm like, yo, I can call you back. <laughs> is this a good time? You know what I mean? Right. This is a good time. Like, yeah, it's good. <laughs> word. Word. Let me just take this trash out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, but but man, the journey is amazing and figuring that you just, you know, to put out an album and I I, I want to give the um the producer because the same producer oh, yeah. Produced, oh Jizz, yeah. Oh okay. shout out to old Jizz. He's a monster, it man. It feels it just feels good. I mean, sometimes it feels good to hear some gritty. Yeah. You know, if yeah, it's like it's like uh I don't know if it's a year ago or recently, uh, Method Man, I mean, not Method Man, Red Man put a project out, slapped it out. And yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. But it felt good because it's yeah. like, you get to see a, you know, yeah. <laughs> you get to see a Red Man video. It's like, yeah, you know, but also to hear a lyricist no and doubt. you're still spitting like that and doing your thing. And you do not, it's like uh, a friend of mine sent me here, this is you, Troy. And I'm looking at Steve Harvey talk at this conference with the cues there. He's like, I. My man got a phone call. He got a phone call. I know what that means. Say it right. Somebody tried. <laughs> it's like, it's time. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, right on time, too. It's, let me tell you, Tracy's crew 
<laughs> no, no, that ain't me, man. That ain't well, that, me. Trace's crew is on point. They were like, all right, your time. <laughs> oh, man. No, we definitely got to do a part two, man. It's we got to so do a part two. Fun. Yes. I want to make sure we get uh, – give everybody your information before we get out of here. Um, right. How to get in touch with you. All and right. uh, so they know they know how to get in touch with you. And, and I'm going to have it all below. All the information is going to be below. The whole interview is on YouTube. Um, you have the snippets on IGTV, but y'all have all the information below as well. But give everybody your information. And uh, like I said, this is part one of two. We got to come back and talk yeah. some more. Digest glory. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you can always, you know what I'm saying? First things first, you want to pick up the new album, Glory, on TracyLeeMusic.com. That's T-R-A-C-E-Y-L-E-E Music.com. Matter of fact, my entire catalog is over there. Um, if you want to get involved with the Trey Lee experience, meaning unreleased music that nobody's ever heard before, you know, the, the whole studio process and what we do in the recording process, um, and even and even consultation with regards from a, from a business and legal perspective, you can join me over at Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Tracy Lee Music, um, where you get an inside behind the curtain uh, look at, you know, different aspects of Tracy Lee that nobody ever sees. Um, you could also hit me on, you know, just for, for socializing purposes. And other things, you can hit me on IG, which is Tracy Lee, E-S-Q, T-R-A-C-E-Y-L-E-E-E-S-Q. You can hit me on Twitter, T-R-A-Y-L-E-E, -E, Trey Lee. Um, and, you know, I'm on Facebook too, Tracy Lee. And, um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's where you can find me, man. Man, I appreciate you taking time out. Give me an hour of your time so we can chop it up. We got to do it again soon. Troy, thank you, brother. I appreciate you, man. This, is, this has been great, man. Of course, we're we going to pick it. I, I need you to remember where we left off at. So for the second oh. conversation, you know what I mean? We can pick it oh, right oh. back up. Not, not at all. Not at all. I won't, I won't forget it up. We're going we're gonna to do it sooner than later. Cause no doubt. Part no two, because I'm, I'm big on people who, are, who have been triumphant on the other side of the industry. and. Yeah. And also just taking it to the next level, showing people options and still doing your passion and doing it to a high level and now making the money you want to make off it. And it's, it's just so many layers. Y'all make yes. some noise, Tracy Lee, wherever you're at. I don't care if you're in the bathroom. Make some noise. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, brother. I'll talk Pre to you in a bit. All right, my man. Peace. Peace.